And the motherfucker's cracked. The motherfucker is cracked. I got this bad boy back. Check it out. Damn, boy. Here, let me take it out of its packaging. Check that beauty out. Woo-wee. So a couple things are back. One, I got my Snap-on scanner back. And two, I got this Malibu back. For those of you that didn't watch the previous videos, I did a... Uh, I did heads on this Malibu and it was running fine for a little bit. Let me get this open. Okay. So that Malibu was running good for a little bit. And one day I was driving it on the freeway. Check engine light came on. Started making noise. And um, now it's back. But here, take a look at it. So. Pretty much did heads on it. For those of you that want to see how that's done, go check out the previous videos. I think there's like a three or four videos that I did on putting heads, installing the lifters, the valves, the gaskets, and the intake. So the Malibu's back, for once, with the check engine light. And I got my scanner back. So this is like, they're both back and they're both back to attack. So I'm gonna hook up my scanner. Yeah, let's do that right now. I'm gonna hook up my scanner. OBD port right here. Pick that up and let me power up my scanner. Good thing about this scanner is I can chill over here on my steps and I can work on the car. I don't have to be inside the car. This that's one of the main reasons I like this thing because you want to be able to step out of the car and uh, go under the hood or go under the car while somebody's up there either revving it or brake torquing it or whatever whatever the case may be on whatever problem you have. Right now I have a check engine light on this 2006 Chevy Malibu Super Sport. It has a 3.9 liter engine and it has like 175,000 miles so it's pretty high up there but when I got this car it wasn't running. It wasn't running so I, uh, I dissected the engine apart and when I got to the heads I saw that one of the valve seats on the heads was broken and that's the reason it wasn't running because it wasn't able to build compression. So now it's back. So here, check it out, man. I'm so happy my scanner's back. And for those of you wondering why my why I'm happy that my scanner's back, go check out my first video. The first video I ever made was me asking for help on how to fix the scanner. Now I got it back; it's fixed, and we're gonna start fixing some cars. We're gonna make we're gonna start making some good videos. Not that I did not not that I don't make good videos. I try to make the best videos that I can with whatever I have whether it's with my cheap Actron scanner with my cell phone uh, with a little cheap camera right now I'm recording on my Sony a5100 for those of you that happen to we're back so look got my scanner hooked up for those of you that wondering about my camera what the hell we try later oh I didn't even have the key in the car stupid I'm like excited about my scanner that I'm forgetting to turn the key on. There you guys have it. It's 175,906. And uh, I'm going to let you guys hear it in a little bit. I want to do something different with this video. I want to make this video kind of interactive. Um, so what I want to do here first, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go to the scanner. So let me set you guys up right here. Is that good? There's a lot of glare, huh? Fuck. That's, the, that's one thing I hate about recording in the daytime is the fucking glare. But anyways, um, it does have a stylus, but I don't feel like using it. I got a good finger here. Oh, fuck am I? Chevy? 2006? Let's go with automatic ID, see how good the scanner is. What if I record straight up, straight ahead like that? I just have to hold the tripod for you guys. Uh, continue. And it says, do you want to load uh, a 2006 Chevy Malibu 3.9? Yes, load that motherfucker up. Uh, code scan. Let's go engine. Connect that cable. And I did. 
Uh, let's go to code menu, display codes, and DTC display. Let's see what we got. So we have a P011 camshaft position sensor performance. Cam position sensor, okay. And we have a P0300 and engine misfire detected. Okay. So where do we go from here? We have a P011 and a P0300. Um, those codes may or may not be related. I'm going to start the car and I'm going to let you guys hear it. Then we're going to come back to the scanner. We're going to look at some data. And then I'm going to end the video there. I'm going to let you guys analyze what we got. And... Uh, you guys are going to take some guesses on what you guys think is going on with the car. Let's do that. Here, I'm going to start it. All right. Here it goes. I'll let you guys hear it. Here. I'll actually take you guys to the engine and let you hear it. It's a little bit shaky and I hear a little ticking noise. That intake looks kind of funny. Okay. Let's go look at let's go look at some data. Alright. So the engine's running. All right, you guys can pick that up. It's a little bit of ticking. All right. Man, I'm happy I got my scanner back. Did I say that already? Okay. Check this out, guys. Um, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go under DTC. Actually, no, let's get out of there. I was just there. I'm going to go under data display now we did have a p0300 so I'm actually gonna go into misfire data misfire data and we're gonna see what we have there's a history right here on number two of 170 misfires number one number three number five so one three five and two shit they're all misfiring not as bad as one in five, huh? One in five have like over a thousand misfires. All right, look at this right here. Cylinder number one is currently misfiring here. Let me let me customize this data. I'm gonna deselect all and just go with a uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and I'm gonna list view those. Okay, okay. So cylinder one is misfiring and it's a constant misfire uh, now we need to find out if that's a spark plug and injector compression now if you guys remember for the previous videos cylinder one was the one that had the um, broken valve seat now there is a ticking noise coming from the engine and you can hear it when I rev it Now we have a check engine light that's flashing. Okay. And um, we got a misfire in cylinder one. So we actually have to go to cylinder one and do some testing. You can actually hear the ticking a little more now. But there's times when the ticking goes away and you actually don't hear it at all. Just have a listen. Okay, so that's that's the data that you guys are getting for the P0300. We have a misfire on cylinder one. And there's a ticking noise coming from the engine. Now, that ticking noise does go away 
Like when I started it, it wasn't as profound as it is right now. Right now it's pretty loud. Hmm. Now we also have a P0011. That's the cam timing or the cam sensor. Let's look at the cam uh let's look at the cam sensor and see how it looks. I'm trying to go through um let's go with this one, CMP actuator data. Okay, cam angle zero degrees, cam variance, desired cam angle, command fifty-three percent. Is that too much or not? RPM, coolant, math, intake. How's that? Turn that light off. I still get a glare. That's why I hate recording during the day. Most the best videos on scanners come out at night. Um, let's see. Here's one thing I don't like. Look at this engine oil pressure. The engine oil pressure reads 129 psi. I don't like that at all. Either that sensor is not good, or we have a lot of oil pressure. Okay. Or is that normal? 129 PSI? I don't think it's normal. Why don't we do this? Let's go to guided component tests. Uh, 3.9. Uh, fuel injection. CMP. Let's look at the cam sensor since we have a code for that. Component information here. This is a good thing about the Verus is it's loaded with information. It says here the cam sensor is a three wire sensor that provides a data of a second of system provide the motor information provided for the cam revolution. Okay. Okay, and I know where it's located. It's under the intake, front engine cover. Okay. Not a big deal. I don't think it's a cam sensor issue. Um, right now, the uh, the main problem that I want to address is the. Um, do we have a knock sensor? Maybe the knock sensor is retarding the timing because the engine's ticking, and um, that's where we're getting our cam code from. It's a cam sims. What was it? P zero eleven. P zero zero eleven. Because there is knocking. What am I looking for? I'm looking for intake manifold map IT. I'm looking for that oil pressure sensor. And I don't see it. We're trying to gather as much information as we can right now by looking at fuel trims, looking at sensors, um, and everything. Let's see. Let's look at the uh, ignition data. Data. Data or data? What do you guys want? Okay, so. Total knock retard. I want to look at that because I actually think that the. Um, Since there's a ticking noise on the engine, I think that the computer's picking that up as knock. Well, it is knock, hello. And, um, I think that based on that knocking noise, it might be advancing or retarding the timing. Depending on It's pretty loud now. It wasn't as loud before. That's why I wanted to make the video so that you guys can interact and give in, um, give me your opinion. Let me know what you think. So, I don't see anything here. Knock, knock, knock. When the doorbell doesn't work, knock retard. That was a joke for those of you that didn't get it. Knock retard. 
back on the scanner. Let's see. Uh, okay, okay. I'm letting you guys see all the data. Hopefully, it comes out good on video on my camera. It looks a little bit of a. Uh, it looks kind of glary, but um, hopefully, you guys can make out what it says. So here, back to that cam actuator data. Since we did, since we did have a cam code. Uh, here's the command. It's commanding 42% uh, and then back to zero, 42 and back to zero. That looks like an issue to me. What do you guys think? I mean, are you commanding 42% or zero? It's all over the place. It's all over the place. Let me just let it idle and see what it does. The car doesn't feel like it's misfiring right now. And if you have a listen to the engine, I don't hear the ticking. Let me let me rev it up and see. Uh, see it it comes and it goes. Comes and goes. Okay. Let's just look at that for a little bit. Is there anything interesting here? The only thing that did catch my eye was this cam command. Right now it's at zero. Check it out, and it's saying zero. And back to 42 and back down to zero. Okay. It's commanding it, but I don't see a change over here. I don't see anything. Even though it wants to command it, 42, 60, the max was 64, there was a point where it commanded, oh that was me revving it, never mind. I don't see anything. So, I'm actually going back to misfire right now that I hear the ticking. And, um... I don't think you, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I don't see any misfires right now. Alright, so I'm going to leave it at that. I showed you guys a little bit of data for the misfires and for the cam for the cam sensor code. One more thing I want to show you before I end the video is uh, I want to see what the troubleshooter the troubleshooter says about the P01 P0011 P0011. Okay? And then I want to see what it says about the P0300. We know the P0300 is actually coming from uh, mostly cylinder 1. That's the misfire that's the cylinder that was misfiring right now. But I want to see what the troubleshooter says. We had a P0011. So let's see what it says there. If I can get rid of this glare. Jesus. Fuck. Cam sensor system performance. DTC says when the CMP angle from the ECM is stable. If the CMP angle varies more than 7.5 cam degrees, then a stability timer of 2 seconds must pre-expire before evaluating the condition. Or will the difference between the desired CMP and the actual CMP angle is more than 8 degrees for 20 seconds or in 320 seconds sample? Check for less than one ohm of resistance between the low reference circuit and ground. If greater than one ohm, test the low reference for an open or high resistance of the circuit to the tunnel. Suspect the CMP actuator solenoid. Check for less than one ohm resistance on a high control circuit. If greater than one ohm, test the high control circuit for an open high resistance. If the circuit test normal, suspect the CMP actuator solenoid. Focus. Again, guys, I'm sorry about the glare. Right now, it's currently like six o'clock here in California. So the sun's going down. Um, I didn't want to wait till later to make a video. I could have, um, whatever. I'm going to leave it at that. You guys leave your input, leave your guesses. I'm going to keep looking into this. But based on the data that you guys saw, let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you guys on tomorrow or the day after tomorrow's video. Peace.